Um, I'll describe it as a large metal 3D printer. Uh, 3D printer for metal. I'd just describe it as a 3D printer that essentially spun a piece of metal uh, to the point where the friction made it so that it could stack metal on top of metal and print anything you want. Uh, I would say it was very easy to use. When I came in here with little to no expectations, you know, I was still blown away. It's easy to use. The buttons are pretty self-explanatory. So once you watch it done once, you're pretty much good to go the second time around. Yeah, I think that this would be a huge benefit to the military. I can easily see soldiers using this after minimal training. The magnitude was large, but actually applying it in use, I'd say it was a lot easier than I imagined. So metal is a solid state additive manufacturing process that is performed in the open atmosphere, which enables it to be used for very large structures. It has a very high deposition rate. Uh, it's compatible with any metal, and we see a lot of interest, especially for large uh, structural components in aluminums that are just not available uh, currently in other metal additive processes or even in repair technologies. So the Army would like to utilize these high strength aluminum alloys in the design of the structural components of the vehicles, whether it be a frame, a hull, other critical components. However, uh, while they can potentially make some of these parts with conventional machining forgings, they do not currently have a way to repair or uh, do maintenance in the battlefield. I think the greatest value this offers the Army is the flexibility. They currently do not have a means to repair these high strength aluminum alloys, which is why they don't, aren't currently used. They don't have a way to repair them. So this turns a switch on to improve the design, to lightweight the vehicle, to improve readiness, to improve safety, to improve performance in the vehicles for the warfighter, but they just can't use them unless they have a way to sustain them. And this is a viable, commercially ready way to sustain these materials. So the Army some years ago, several decades ago, identified the best way to manufacture passive armor would be to encapsulate ceramic tiles in metal. However, they were not able to make it financially viable. I was told that they were basically given the option you can buy a new vehicle or you can buy armor for the vehicle. The cost was pretty extreme. If you consider what the, what the armor looks like, is a, a ceramic tile may have this form. Right? It's a ceramic, it's got very good performance in ballistics. They approached us and said, hey, we have an idea. Is this something you can do? So we, we took the tile, we looked at it, and we said, okay, we know we can print we can additively manufacture with titanium, we can additively manufacture with aluminum, uh, and we have certainly encapsulated or embedded things within the metal while we printed. And we didn't see reason we couldn't do this. So we, we set out, uh, we put these tiles on the machine, and we're able to encapsulate it. So a tile like this is, is within this aluminum block here. And so this is very exciting. So we've taken these now to the, the, the range and are doing testing to see just how good the performance is. Uh, and from there, we'll be able to iterate. But the vision is that now you can have this really flexible means to manufacture armor and custom uh, applications, custom geometries, uh, specific to a vehicle, maybe specific to a, a mission a requirement. So it, it's a very exciting opportunity, I think, for something they really want to be able to do. So this is a missile launcher rail which sit underneath an aircraft uh, and this is what the missile attaches to beneath, beneath the aircraft. So as the plane's flying around, the missile sits uh, in this section here and over time this part gets worn out. However, the price of the part has gone from $6,000 to $20,000. So now not only is it attractive, it's imperative that we find a way to fix this part and keep them in service longer. So we do a nice demonstration, demonstrate we can repair these parts and ship them back to the Air Force for their evaluation. So five years later, they come back to us and say, hey, we've been flying these parts for the last five years and they're performing very well. <laughs> I thought it was really impressive. One of the things that I'm most impressed with a meld is uh, its deposition rate. So, our specific project right now is one use case. It's uh, using MELD as a repair technique in uh, family infrastructure. However, MELD applies to many other different types of applications, even within civil infrastructure. In a military application, the military relies on transportation to get troops, uh, equipment from one site to another. 
right? Without those, the troops cannot perform effectively. So they're gonna rely on the infrastructure, meaning the roads and bridges, to get from one place to another. Without that infrastructure in place, they can't perform adequately, and they're left with fewer tools, improper equipment to perform a job, which is very critical. I would say it's very innovative. I'd say it's uh, futuristic in a way of like seeing the things that they're able to come up with and uh, their ideas for the future. Um, I think it's gonna be a better system moving forward of how to repair and build things. Uh, I think it's gonna be safer and cleaner and more efficient. I think overall, that's, that's the way that our military needs to lean, is having a way that we can be, um, I guess, more proactive with how we're doing things and uh, wasting less resources and being able to like move things from place to place and able to draw up any concept that we need to. Oh, you could use this to, the first thing that pops into my mind is uh, tanks that have been in combat and have bullet holes. You could fix them, just quicker process, quicker turnaround, cheaper, since you don't have to order a whole new plate to replace it with. You can just fill that little hole. I'd say it's really exciting. You know, I describe it as a, almost a looking glass into what we're developing and how we're doing things and really the future, because I mean, equipment needs to be repaired all the time. And uh, if we can come up with concepts like this and actually put it into mass, um, I guess you should uh, nationwide, then it'll be really be helpful. Mm -hmm.